Good morning. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see you. And I'm honored to introduce you to a very productive young woman. Heather Troutman is a student ambassador and a junior in the Environmental Science Academic Program at NC State. She's also an officer of the Woolpack Environmental Student Association, a columnist for the student for the school paper, the founder of Plastic Propaganda, and a social entrepreneur on the rise. She works as a social media consultant for the Waste Reduction and Recycling Department at NC State, and she coordinates campus sustainability initiatives with the Sustainability Department. We're very excited to hear Heather and join me in welcoming her now. <clears throat> Afternoon, morning, morning. Um, so I'm Heather Troutman. Uh, I do attend North Carolina State University. I'm officially a senior. New semester, so uh, a super senior, so I've got three more semesters to go, but I'm there. Uh, I am a columnist for the technician. I'm the one writer who focuses on issues of sustainability um, and lifestyle change, lifestyle improvement, uh, and I'm featured once a week in the paper. Uh, I am also an officer of the Wolfpack Environmental Student Association, which acts as a hub to offer all um, student and local initiatives related to sustainability, environmental degradation, recycling, community awareness, um, all under the umbrella of, um, you know, environmental uh, stewardism. Um, that's what WESA is. It's a hub for everyone to come together and collaboratively discuss what we're doing um, and how we can be more effective in our resource use. Um, and then I'm a, a lover of Spanish and understanding that the issues that I pursue which are environmental degradation and lifestyle improvement um, in reflection of environmental degradation, is uh, it's world, worldwide. It's, a, it's an issue everywhere, and it's something that needs to be addressed in all people. Um, so this video I'm not personally responsible for, though I am in uh, close contact with the um, producers of the video, uh, but it really sums up my initiative, what I'm trying to do, and it's really fun. So let's watch it together. Okay, would you like paper or plastic? your own bag yeah but you forgot it though you were busy dreaming of ice cream and all that cookie dough your life is wrapped in plastic convenience is your motto but plastic addiction's worse than they want you to know bp's oil spill almost like we did it we use one million grossy bags every single minute recycling them's a joke yo that baggies don't go anywhere turns a little pieces and it spreads over everywhere into your food supply into your blood supply not to mention birds and fish and cuties you don't want to die look at baby sammy dioxins in this milky way because even a breast milk it's got pcb and bpa okay now you get it how you gonna stop it though banning single use plastic bags is the way to go join other states and cities kick the nasty habit tell your representatives to ban single use bags make plastic Save our cities, bring in your own bags and folks and bottles should be easy. The corporations selling toxins on the government. Stand together for yourself and kiss the planet saying yeah, yeah.
Being responsible for your environment starts with just doing one thing. Making this video was my dot. What's yours? Um, so the, the, the nonprofit organization featured at the end, who's responsible for the video, um, so kindly when I ask permission to share this video with you guys and other people when I speak, um, introduced me to uh, four other campaigns in the United States, three in California and one in um, Oregon, um, doing the same thing, um, which is addressing single-use plastic items in the concealed environment of a university. Uh, a university is a democracy, um, it's a bureaucracy really, um, and so to productively move and change systems and the way things work for a betterment, you have to address the system and understand how the system works um, and um, find your point convincing and, and why it's an issue. And so these are um, three other organizations that Plastic Propaganda has been introduced with to, that have been more, high, more successful. So um, I'm working with them to really push ideas to how to move it along in the university scale. So what we're talking about is um, plastic single-use items. And the issue with, with single-use items, um, in 2010, according to the EPA, the United States alone produced 250 million tons of municipal waste. And a very high percentage of that waste are single-use plastic items that have been produced to use once. And a lot of energy goes in, a lot of resource extraction, transportation of the, the raw materials, then the manufacturing of the product, then the transportation again to distribution centers, to be used once for a very short, I mean, if we're talking plastic silverware or a plastic cup for 10, 15, 30 minutes, and then it's thrown away forever, now solid waste. Um, and the thing with solid waste, well, I'm jumping ahead. So with single-use items, it's, it's a social thing, it's a social issue, because since the 1950s, since it's the end of the Second World War. That's really where conveniency and, and single use came about in society, especially here in the United States. At the end of the Second World War, we had a surplus uh, economically. Um, also, a lot of the workforce, which had been males, had left to go to the war and were filled by women and minorities. And that diversified the workforce. And at the end of the war, that maintained. And women were in the workforce. And um, multiple ethnicities were now maintaining multiple positions in um, companies and moving up. So there's surplus money and there's less uh, work, not work, workforce in the home to maintain the home. And so single use uh, is very attractive and very appealing, uh, minimizes time. But now we've come to a place where everything is for use. And depending on where you go and what you're it becomes extremely extravagant, you know, hotels and airfare, but the issue here in Raleigh that I've noticed being a transplant from Charlotte is the entire area of Raleigh, but especially Hillsborough Street, right here connecting Meredith all the way down through states area, uh, or territory, we'll say, neighborhood, everything. I go to sit in a restaurant and it's just single use, and I came in, I sat down, I might even have a waitress, but still my cup is plastic, being used one time, and I, it's offensive to me, and it's um, blatant disregard of, of the issue, but it's complicated because a lot of people don't understand the issue, and so they're not blatant um, intentionally, it's not understanding the concepts because this is embedded in society, it's how things are produced, it's how we are used to functioning, and we don't consider it, and so my campaign, Plastic Propaganda, that's its initiative, is to, to address that awareness, to begin the discussion, um, what the issue is, what the problem is. When we're talking about solid waste, especially entirely synthetic products, such as plastics, uh, which also are made of petroleum-based, so I mean, this is a fossil fuel that has been pulled up from the ground, which is an extremely intense, energy-intensive extraction process. To be, to be used for a few moments and then piled on top of the ground. I mean, I'm not sure how the process of a, a landfill is um, facetious in its naming because you don't fill the land, you place things on top of it. Uh, and when the amount of waste is 250 million tons a year, the anaerobic process is not there in breaking it down. So items are just piled atop of one another and crushed, so the mass of the trash shrinks, but the chemical leaching, the chemical products of those um, 
those crushed items persist. They do not go away. They do not break down. They're synthetic. There is certainly fantastic engineering going along with landfills here in the United States currently practice to really maintain the amount of chemical leaching into our soil and water. But not all waste that we produce makes it to the landfill where it's properly managed. A lot of it, uh, even if it goes into the trash can, it, then in the point of the trash can to here, it makes it to the ground. And we all know that. We see it regularly. So how plastic propaganda started in my mind. I, I entered state last January, so I'm, I'm coming on a year. And I was very interested in, in policy change uh, and learning. For me, my, my college education isn't entirely about a degree in uh, the skill sets that you learn in the classroom, though those are extremely important to my goal. But more than that, alongside with that, are skills to make me successful in, in general. And so those are extracurricular activities that I get myself involved in, which I'm a little too involved at the moment, maybe. Um, but it's fun, so I work it out. But at State, there's a, we have a sustainability office. Waste reduction and recycling has made a huge commitment to recycling and public awareness. But recycling, in arguably an intelligent method to address the 250 million tons of waste that Americans produce in a year, 2010, and arguably an intelligent method, but there, recycling doesn't address chemical leaching. And that's what solid waste, solid waste has three main problems. It's um, or a single use item. I mean, it's overfilling landfills, chemical leaching of the products from the disposal process, but also from the manufacturing process, um, and then resource extraction. And recycling addresses resource extraction, and it also addresses solid waste, but it doesn't address chemical leaching. The recycling process is very energy intensive, and there are chemical byproducts mostly re re uh, released into the atmosphere. Reduction addresses all three. And so that's, that's where I, I decided to hit with plastic propaganda. It's, recycling is great, and recycling should be encouraged. But more than recycling, you should, it, what should be encouraged is reduction. Uh, being conscious of what you purchase uh, and where those items are going to go. So I've started Plastic Propaganda. It's a two-part campaign. One is the education we've been talking about, and then the other is actual policy change. Um, but the two, I believe, need to go together. You need community support uh, to understand the issue and be willing to make the changes, but then you also need administrative support to in, not encourage but enforce and, and, and keep it pushing along. And so a large facet of the campaign that I'm working with right now, um, I found a full life cycle recycler called Remerchandise, and they are going to purchase the soda bottles that are generated on campus through our waste reduction recycling department. And then they recycle the soda bottles into a fiber, and the fiber will be used to make sustainable tote bags. Um, the tote bags can be equipped with some lovely graphics supporting state, of course, why wouldn't it? Uh, but then additionally, information about the campaign, its mission, uh, the need for everyone to act upon it and act immediately. You know, it's lifestyle, it's what you choose to do. And you, if you choose to produce the waste and to consume these materials, then you're part of the problem. But if you acknowledge the problem and you're willing to make small modifications to your lifestyle to make a very large impact, why wouldn't you? And so carrying a bag is just one easy thing. We're, we're students on campus, or we're professors, or we're staff, and we all have bags. We all have a laptop case, a briefcase, a book bag, a gym bag, and a purse, and most of us have all of those. Why do I need one more plastic bag if I go to the store and get a sandwich, a bag of chips, um, you know, and a, a, a water, or a soda, um, when I already have mechanisms on me to carry it? However, all the retailers on campus distribute plastic bags regardless of how the size of your purchase or your desire, the consumer's desire to have a bag. Uh, a perfect example is the Taco Bell on campus. You get one, ta uh, one taco and they put it in a bag. They don't ask you, and actually, I promise, if you ask them to not give you the bag and to reuse it for someone else, it might be a few minute conversation to express your point and your urgency with it. Um, so the bookstore is entirely interested in reducing their bag usage. And so they will be purchasing a large quantity of these bags and uh, selling them at cost at the register. But then additionally, 
they have decided to discount your purchase by the amount of the cost of the bag. And then every time you use the bag, they'll continue to discount your purchases. So I'm currently working to get with uh, the different food vendors and have a similar, uh, similar uh, system set up where if you bring the bag in and don't take one from them, they'll, they'll offer you a discount. And this is to really encourage the public to use it. This is your economic profit for the student um, to do so. And it's, it's, that is reduction in essence. Um, so it's coming along, it's doing well. I've got uh, the graphics being worked on for the bag. I have uh, several different, camp not campaigns, contests and um, grants that I'm pursuing to be able to distribute a large amount of these bags without um, sales, so to, to be able to give them to student and faculty, um, I've decided to, it's a campus community issue. You know, the campus community is not just the students that are there, but it's, it's everyone that's affected by campus. All, those, all of those lifestyles, all of those individuals are influenced by what they see and what's going on. And of all of that, the entire 80,000 community that is North Carolina State University can have the, the, the seed of eco-consciousness planted in them then that is going to affect their friends, their families, the businesses that they work in and excel in and lead and start. Um, and it, it'll begin to make a very large impact, not on state, not on students, on communities and spread and become international because that's what we're, we're trained to be as leaders. That's what, that's what we pursue. Um, and the world is very, very international and so is our businesses. So that's plastic propaganda. Um, I guess the one more point, one final point, is that the means that we're using to educate and disseminate this information is art. We all, especially as students, especially on a campus, are constantly flooded with signs, posters, uh, people with little clipboards who want to tell you all about saving the penguins, and other things that, that are effective methods. But it's not the method that I wanted to use. Um, you can be told information, or you can find information, and through art, people are interested. We all have aesthetic, we all have a, an aesthetic understanding, it's natural. And when plastic propaganda produces large-scale demonstrations made entirely out of plastic, so this is an example out of California that I love, not responsible, wish I was, for the production of it, that's entirely made out of water bottles uh, on a beach to, to Give the information, don't bring your water bottle to my beach. And if you do, take it back with you. But how about you just bring a, a canteen, a container, you know, that you'll use much more than the one time that you're here today. Uh, so that's what we do. We, we make large-scale demonstrations made out of waste uh, and then place them up. And it provides you with the information. So you, as an individual, see it, you're interested, and you keep the information. And that's what begins to, to cause the change in your mind. Hopefully, that's the goal. Um, so we actually have our first full-scale demonstration coming up next week, um, which will be a massive wolf, he's pretty big, made out of uh, plastic bags. That'll be exciting. So that's me. Um, this is my information if you're interested at all about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, um, or how, you know, you can get involved and, and be a part of it or some of the demonstrations or installation in the area. Certainly feel free to let me know. Thank you for your time.